channel. We're here today to continue reading aloud Zora Neale Hurston's Your Eyes Were Watching God. If you have a copy of the book, please read along with me. If you're just here to listen to me read, I hope you enjoy this video. We're now up to chapter 11. So here we go, chapter 11. Janie wanted to ask Hezekiah about tea cake, but she was afraid he might misunderstand her and think she was interested. In the first place, he looked too young for her. Must be around 25, and here she was around 40. Then again, he didn't look like he had too much. Maybe he was hanging around to get in with her and strip her of all that she had, just as well if she never saw him again. He was probably the kind of man who lived with various women, but never married. Fact is, she decided to treat him so cold if he ever did foot the place that he'd be sure not to come hanging around there again. He waited a week exactly to come back for Janie's snub. It was early in the afternoon and she and Hezekiah were alone. She heard somebody humming like they were feeling for pitch and looked towards the door. Tea cake stood there, mimicking the tuning of a guitar. He frowned and struggled with the pegs of his imaginary instrument, watching her out of the corner of his eye with that secret joke playing over his face. Finally, she smiled, and he sung middle C, put his guitar under his arm and walked on back to where she was. Evening, folks. Thought y'all might like a little music this evening, so I brought long my box. Crazy thing, Janie commented, beaming out with light. He acknowledged the compliment with a smile and sat down on a box. Anybody have a Coca-Cola with me? I just had one, Janie temporized with her conscience. It'll have to be done all over again, Miss Starks. How come? Because it wasn't done right that time. Kaya, bring us two bottles from the bottom of the box. How you been making out since I seen your last tea cake? Can't kick. Could be worse. Made four days this week and got the paint in my pocket. We got a rich man around here then. Buying passenger trains and bottle ships this week? Which one do you want? It all depends on you. Oh, if you's treating me to it, I believe I'll have the passenger train. If it blow up, I'll still be on land. Choose the battleship if that's what you really want. I know where one is right now. Seen one round Key West the other day. How are you going to get it? Oh shucks, them admirals is always old folks. Can't no old man stop me from getting no ship for you if that's what you want. I'd get that ship out from under him so slick till he'd be walking the water like old Peter before he knowed it. They played away the evening again. Everybody was surprised at Janie playing checkers, but they liked it. Three or four stood behind her and coached her moves and generally made merry with her in a restrained way. Finally, everybody went home, but tea cake. You can close up, Kaya, Janie said. Think I'll go on home. Tea cake fell in beside her and mounted the porch this time. So she offered him a seat and they made a lot of laughter out of nothing. Near 11 o'clock, she remembered a piece of pound cake she had put away. Tea cake went out to the lemon tree at the corner of the kitchen and picked some lemons and squeezed them for her. So they had lemonade too. Moon's too pretty for anybody to be sleeping it away, tea cake said after they had washed up the plates and glasses. Let's us go fishing. Fishing? This time of night? Uh-huh, fishing. I know where the bream is bedding. Seen him when I come around the lake this evening. Where's your fishing poles? Let's go set on the lake. It was so crazy digging worms by lamplight and setting out for Lake Sabilia after midnight that she felt like a child breaking rules. That's what made Janie like it. They caught two or three and got home just before day. Then she had to smuggle tea cake out by the back gate and that made it seem like some great secret she was keeping from the town. Miss Janie, Hezekiah began sullenly next day, you oughtn't allow that tea cake to be walking to the house with you. I'll go with you myself after this if you're scared. What's the matter with tea cake, Kaya? Is he a thief or something? I ain't never heard nobody say he stole nothing. Is he bad about toting pistols and knives to hurt people with? They don't say he ever cut nobody or shot nobody neither. Well, is he, he, is he got a wife or something like that? Not that it's any of my business. She held her breath for the answer. No, and nobody wouldn't marry tea cake to starve to death lest there's somebody just like him. Ain't used to nothing. Of course, he always keep himself in changing clothes. That long-legged tea cake ain't got a doodly squat. He ain't got no business making himself familiar with nobody like you. I said I was going to tell you, so you could know. Oh, that's all right, Hezekiah. Thank you mighty much. The next night, when she mounted her steps, Tea Cake was there before her, sitting on the porch in the dark. 
He had a string of fresh caught trout for a present. I'll clean them, you fry them and let's eat, he said with the assurance of not being refused. They went out into the kitchen and fixed up the hot fish and corn muffins and ate. Then Tea Cake went to the piano without so much as asking and began playing blues and singing and throwing grins over his shoulder. The sounds lulled Jane into soft slumber and she woke up with Tea Cake combing her hair and scratching the dandruff from her scalp. It made her more comfortable and drowsy. Tea Cake, where you get a comb from to be combing my hair with? I brought it with me. Come prepared to lay my hands on it tonight. Why, tea cake? What good do combing my hair do you? It's my comfortable, not yourn. It's mine too. I ain't been sleeping so good for more than a week. Cause I've been wishing so bad to get my hands in your hair. It's so pretty. It feels just like underneath a dove's wings next to my face. Mm, you was mighty easy satisfied. I've been had the same hair next to my face ever since I cried the first time. And taint never give me no thrill. I tell you like you told me. You was mighty hard to satisfy. I bet you them lips don't satisfy you neither. That's right, tea cake. There's there. And I make use of them whenever it's necessary. But nothing special to me. Mm -mm -mm. I bet you you don't never go to the looking glass and enjoy your eyes yourself. You let other folks get all the enjoyment out of them. Without taking in any of it yourself. Nah. I never gazes at them in the looking glass. If anybody else gets any pleasure out of him, I ain't been told about it. See that? You's got the world in a jug and make out you don't know it. But I'm glad to be the one to tell you. I guess you done told plenty women all about it. I'm the Apostle Paul to the Gentiles. I tells them and then again I shows them. I thought so. She yawned and made to get up from the sofa. You done got me so sleepy with your head scratching, I can hardly make it to the bed. She stood up at once, collecting her hair. He sat still. Nah, you ain't sleepy, Miss Janie. You just want me to go. You figure I'm a rounder and a pimp, and you done wasted too much time talking with me. Why, tea cake? Whatever put that notion in your head? The way you look at me when I said what I did. Your face scared me so bad till my whiskers drawed up. I ain't got no business being mad at nothing you do and say. You got it all wrong. I ain't mad at all. I know it. And that's what put the shamery on me. You was just disgusted with me. Your face just left here and went off somewhere else. Nah, you ain't mad with me. I'd be glad if you was, because then I might be doing something to please you. But like it is, my likes and dislikes ought not to make no difference with you, tea cake. That's for your lady friend. I'm just a sometime friend of yourn. Janie walked toward the stairway slowly, and Tea Cake sat where he was, as if he had frozen to his seat, in fear that once he got up, he'd never get back in again. He swallowed hard and looked at her walk away. I didn't aim to let on to you about it, leastways not right away. But I'd rather be shot with tax than for you to act with me like you is right now. You got me in the go-along. At the Newell post, Janie whirled around and for the space of a thought, she was lit up like a transfiguration. Her next thought brought her crashing down. He's just saying anything for the time being, feeling he's got me, so I'll believe him. The next thought buried her under tons of cold futility. He's trading on being younger than me, getting ready to laugh at me for an old fool. But oh, what wouldn't I give to be 12 years younger so I could believe him? Ah, tea cake, you just said that tonight because the fish and cornbread tasted sort of good. Tomorrow your mind would change. No, nah, it wouldn't neither. I know better. Anyhow, from what you told me when we was back there in the kitchen, I'm nearly 12 years older than you. I done thought all about that and tried to struggle against it, but it don't do me no good. The thought of my youngness don't satisfy me like your presence do. It makes a whole heap of difference with most folks, tea cake. Things like that got a whole lot to do with convenience, but it ain't got nothing to do with love. Well, I love to find out what you think after sunup tomorrow. This is just your night thought. You got your ideas and I got mine. I got a dollar that said you was wrong, but I reckon you don't bet money neither. I never have done it so far. But as the old folks always say, I'm born, but I ain't dead. No telling what I'm liable to do yet. He got up suddenly and took his hat. Good night, Miss Janie. Look like we done run our conversation from grassroots to pine trees. Goodbye. 
he almost ran out of the door. Janie hung over the newel post thinking so long that she all but went to sleep there. However, before she went to bed, she took a good look at her mouth, eyes, and hair. All next day in the house and store, she thought resisting thoughts about tea cake. She even ridiculed him in her mind and was a little ashamed of the association. But every hour or two, the battle had to be fought all over again. She couldn't make him look just like any other man to her. He looked like the love thoughts of women. He could be a bee to a blossom, a pear tree blossom in the spring. He seemed to be crushing scent out of the world with his footsteps, crushing aromatic herbs with every step he took. Spices hung about him. He was a glance from God. So he didn't come that night, and she laid in bed and pretended to think scornfully of him. Bet he's hanging around some joke or another. Glad I treated him cold. What do I want with some trashy en out the streets? Bet he's living with some woman or another and taking me for a fool. Glad I caught myself in time. She tried to console herself that way. The next morning, she awoke hearing a knocking on the front door and found tea cake there. Hello, Miss Jane. I hope I woke you up. You sure did, tea cake. Come in and rest your hat. What you doing out so soon this morning? Thought I'd try to get here soon enough to tell you my daytime thoughts. I see you needs to know my daytime feelings. I can't sense you into it at night. You crazy thing. Is that what you come here for at daybreak? Sure is. You needs telling and showing and that's what I'm doing. I picked some strawberries too. I figured you might like. Tea cake. I clear I don't know what to make out of you. You so crazy. You better let me fix you some breakfast. Ain't got time. I got a job of work. Got to be back in Orlando at 8 o'clock. See you later. Tell you straighter. He bolted down the walk and was gone. But that night when she left the store, he was stretched out in the hammock on the porch with his hat over his face, pretending to sleep. She called him. He pretended not to hear. He snored louder. She went to the hammock to shake him and he seized and pulled her in with him. After a little, she let him adjust her in his arms and laid there for a while. Tea cake. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Come on, let's eat some supper. They went inside and their laughter rang out first from the kitchen and all over the house. Janie awoke next morning by feeling tea cake almost kissing her breath away. Holding her and caressing her as if he feared she might escape his grasp and fly away. Then he must dress hurriedly and get to his job on time. He wouldn't let her get him any breakfast at all. He wanted her to get her rest. He made her stay where she was. In her heart she wanted to get his breakfast for him but she stayed in bed long after he was gone. So much had been breathed out by the pores that tea cake still was there. She could feel him and almost see him bucking around the room in the upper air. After a long time of passive happiness, she got up and opened the window and let tea cake leap forth and mount to the sky on a wind. That was the beginning of things. In the cool of the afternoon, the fiend from hell, especially sent to lovers, arrived at Janie's ear doubt. All the fears that circumstance could provide and the heart feel attacked her on every side. This was a new sensation for her, but no less excruciating. If only tea cake would make her certain. He did not return that night, nor the next, and so she plunged into the abyss and descended to the ninth darkness where light has never been. But the fourth day after, he came in the afternoon driving a battered car jumped out like a deer and made the gesture of tying it to a post on the store porch, ready with his grin. She adored him and hated him at the same time. How could he make her suffer so and then come grinning like that with that darling way he had? He pinched her arm as he walked inside the door. Brought me something to haul you off in, he told her with that secret chuckle. Get your hat if you're going to wear one. We got to go buy groceries. I sells groceries right here in the store tea cake, if you don't happen to know. She tried to look cold, but she was smiling in spite of herself. Not the kind we want for the occasion. You sells groceries for ordinary people. Who is going to buy for you? The big Sunday school picnic is tomorrow. Bet you don't forget it. And we got to be there with a swell basket and ourselves. I don't know about that, tea cake. Tell you what you do. Go on down to the house and wait for me. Be there in a minute. As soon as she thought it looked right, she slipped out of the back and joined tea cake. No need of fooling herself. Maybe he was just being polite. Tea cake, you sure you want me to go to this picnic with you? 
Let me scramble around to get the money to take you. Been working like a dog for two whole weeks and she come asking me if I want her to go. Putting myself to a whole heap of trouble to get the scar so you can go over to Winter Park or Orlando to buy the things you might need. And this woman sat here and asked me if I want her to go. Don't get mad, tea cake. I just didn't want you doing not a politeness. If there's somebody else you'd rather take, it's all right with me. No, it ain't all right with you. If it was, you wouldn't be saying that. Have the nerve to say what you mean. Well, all right, tea cake. I want to go with you real bad, but... Oh, tea cake, don't make no false pretense with me. Janie, I hope God may kill me if I'm lying. Nobody else on earth could hold a candle to you, baby. You got the keys to the kingdom. That was chapter 11. I hope you join me next video for chapter 12. Until then, happy reading. Bye.